Okay, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be here. And uh, it's very nice to, to be here, not only in a beautiful surrounding outside, but also a beautiful surrounding inside. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, so my name is Christine Engvig, and at the moment I run an organization called WIN. And we are probably most known for the WIN conference, which is an annual gathering of mostly women leaders. And we have also every year lots of other events, so it's a network of, of incredible people. Because it's not only a gathering of women leaders per se, but it's uh, through a vision of empowering, of developing and of connecting leaders with a vision for the future that's more feminine, more authentic and more global. And with feminine, we don't mean high heels and nail polish, but more what we're talking about here today, of collaboration, of using your intuition, of uh, receptivity, of creativity, of spirituality, alongside, of course, with the more masculine of getting things done. So I started this 15 years ago. But I thought, since this is a dinner speech, that I would like to share with you some of why perhaps I started this, and where do I come from, and what brought me there. So, the history, and then a little bit about what I do now, and a little bit what I hope to <coughs> see we do into the future. So I grew up on the west coast of Norway, and it's in another incredible place. Uh, mountains like this, uh, islands, I could look at the sea all the time. Um, and in my hometown, it's called Kristiansund, it has bridges between all these islands. So I understood, you know, we were connecting because in order for me to go to town, or the other part, I had to cross a bridge. So that was my first meeting with kind of the connecting and the very important, I thought that was a very colorful place. I come, I'm kind of the, could have been the fifth generation photographer, but I didn't choose to do that. But in my family, on my father's side, everyone was a photographer, and also other family members. So you can imagine uh, how it is in a family of photographers. It's all about, you know, turn around, move a little bit, the light is better here and the light is better there. So it was actually the essence of all of that was putting people in the right light. So on my mother's side, she comes from a very numerous family and she's a nurse. But what I learned from her, I think, was uh, she was very concerned about every birthday party that everyone was invited and we had to do a lot of things. We traveled around the country to the aunt's birthday, the cousin's birthday and so on. And ultimately, as I was looking out at the sea and wanting to travel, I saw that what I learned from her was all about making people feel included. As I looked at the sea, I thought, I'm not going to stay here. I want to travel and see the world. So if I went, I went to study in Oslo, I went to Japan, I went to Australia. And I studied business administration, and I had a dream. I wanted to go to Japan. So I went to Japan, and I worked there for a while. And then I returned to Norway. I had another dream. I wanted to go to Italy. So I went to Ita Italy. I studied at uh, Bocconi for a year, again, business administration. And I started to work for some big multinational companies. Uh, I was very proud because, you know, it was the right thing to do in the early 90s. And I uh, started to work could do my job very well, but there was something strange about it. I didn't see that people were put in the right light, nor did I feel that everyone was included. So I didn't last so long, I didn't, I changed a couple of jobs, but it was still like one bank after another. It was the same everywhere. And then I decided that, that or then by coinc some coincidences also happened. I started to work as a consultant, I travel a lot in, in Eastern Europe. And again, I got shocked by how also sometimes I saw women were, didn't have many chances or what they had, they had to do all the work and work that maybe wasn't such uh, great with dignity. And, and in Milan, I started to join a women's network and I realized that being part of a group like that was so powerful. I met so many contacts. And as I was a naive student, I thought it was about what I knew, but I realized in real life, it's also about who you know and who know you. So I thought, this is so powerful because uh, we can do so much together. I'd seen the corporate structure that was not human enough for me. I'd seen travel around the world. It's not easy to be a businesswoman in Japan or in Moscow or any of these places. And at the same time, in 15 years ago, internet was coming. And I thought, my God, things are changing. We can be part of this big change. Let's do something. So I started around my kitchen table 
uh, got together some other women and said, let's do a conference, let's talk about the new way of globalization, let's uh, network, let's talk about how we can bring more caring and sharing, so the feminine values into things. So from this kind of kitchen table operation that lasted a few years, all run on a volunteer basis, started to get bigger. Hand uh, in hand with this kind of uh, my, my vision and hope to, and getting people along, companies started also to look at diversity. They started to look at how can get more women into leadership. So this way I started to talk to them and say, look, I can help you. You come to the event, we can do leadership training. And, and this way I got sponsorship. So slowly but surely I got some more money into the, into the, into the <laughs> box, so to speak, and we could hire some people and it could grow. So this has happened over the past 15 years and our last uh, huge global conference had 1,000 uh, thousand participants. We just had a big event in Japan a few weeks ago and we're doing something in India now. And <laughs> all I can say is that what is so exciting right now is that what was a fight, it was paradoxically a fight to bring forth a vision that was more feminine, more authentic, where each of us can contribute with our unique contribution and also to bring global mindset it's, it's something that so many more people are seeing so it's not such a fight anymore it's actually we can actually finally start doing the more feminine of start kind of receiving more magic and receiving things so a few years ago someone asked me Christine can you come and speak to us about networking Women International Network, networking. And I thought, oh, well, I don't really like networking, I said. Because at the time, I felt networking was all about being aggressive and throwing business cards at each other. But Kristen, that's what you do all the time. You had no money, you started this, but now there are thousands of people. You must know about networking. And I said, yeah, of course I know. But then I started to think, what is networking? And I realized it isn't about what you do, it's actually about how you do things. So uh, over the years I've reflected a lot on that and I also realized that a network, just like networking, so networking I can network with you, network with many people, we have a network together on the collective level. And this network we are in is ideally a nurturing environment, a context where we can grow, where we can flourish. So the power of the context is so important because also we don't always want to be told things, but if we, we can evolve as or out of the impulses we, we receive around us, if we can have support, we can do so much. So I started then to look at, um, so what are some ingredients of a networking that can create such an environment? in which we flourish. So uh, I've created now what has become the win way of networking. And I want to share those with you today because for some of you this will be obvious and some of those can be clear and it's something we can continue tonight to network you know, according to these principles or we can continue uh, with that tomorrow. <coughs> and <laughs> rule number one is really about being open. Uh, I see uh, if you want to create global mindsets, we are working with people from so many different cultures, different backgrounds. Here we have artists, we have business people, we have fashion designers, there are many different people, authors, writers. And to then create as good connections as possible, it's that of being open. And it's also about being open inside and you know how we often want to say what we think about something. But it's also there just let things, let us receive things without having an opinion of everything. And it's also about catching yourself in judging. Catching yourself in judging others, in judging yourself. So being as open you possibly can. That's rule number one. Open to learn, open to connect. So rule number two is really about being ready to connect also. Share something about yourself and not only about uh, business, uh, it could be of everything. We always say who you are, what you do, and something else about you. So share your pas passions and share what is most exciting for you at the moment because these days too, it's all about 
the great energies, what makes us flow. And I heard the speaker today too was also talked a lot about that. What's your passion? Because that drives not only you, it drives people. This is how you get people to follow you and work for you, I heard this morning. So, so that's another one. So be ready to connect. Be ready to contribute is the third one. So if someone needs help, uh, help them. Or maybe you know someone else that needs help in your network. And uh, be quick to introduce someone. So if I know you and I meet her, I can introduce her to you and so on. So be quick on introducing people. I mean, here, I've been introduced to a lot of people. This is basic for you, but it's also always so nice. Introduce people, be generous about those things. And also, it's the other side of contributing. It's also that of being willing to receive help and ask for help. And uh, yeah, and value that you have something to contribute to it, really. So, and then there are a couple of other things we talk about in the networking rules too, which is number four, it's that of taking risk. Take some risk. Uh, so if you have a new idea, a new thought, express it, test it. Especially when you're in an environment like here, where else should you do it, you know? So, so try something new and take the risk and share it. Rule number five is that of committing. So when you say you're gonna do something, commit. And I know from the successful people in this group and the other many successful people I have met from all over the world, one of the key ingredients is that there are people that commit. They commit the, their word, you can count on them. So it's a commitment. <coughs> At the same time, if you are in a situation which is really unacceptable or someone does something unacceptable to you, you don't accept it. So I talk a lot about this now with women too. Uh, never uh, accept an unacceptable situation because it will reinforce it. There is um, harassment at work, there could be violence around. So these things is also very important that at least on our side, we don't accept it. And again, ask for help. And, uh, yeah, and then the uh, next rule is that of just being light and have fun. And when you talk to someone and you see they're excited about what they talk about, let them talk more, be generous about that and vice versa. And ultimately, uh, the last but not least rule is expect some magic in life because it does happen. So these are the, the seven rules, I think it was seven, <laughs> rules of, of networking that we do at WIN. And through this, I have noticed that these contexts are being created. And uh, in the context, we grow and things can grow. And if the context is good, then we can feel comfortable and we can humanize globalization. We can have the space to think about the common good because if you only need to think, you can't, it's not enough to just think about ourselves. So I think all of this is very important. So this is what I do as my full-time job. I have six people working with me um, full-time, some freelancers, some students, some trainees on top of that, we have the advisory board. And there are people now uh, a little bit everywhere. So I think that's, I would like to thank you. And um, thank you again for inviting me.